What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at Sundance 2024. I am lucky enough to be sitting with the team behind in the summers. First, I will start by saying huge congratulations on your film. My heart was full watching this. It's really an accomplishment, especially for a feature directorial debut. So congratulations. Thank Thank you so much. Before we dig into the movie, I need to say a special thank you to our wonderful sponsor, Filmio. Filmio has us here supporting independent filmmaking, which we greatly appreciate. They are breaking barriers by putting the power to green light movies in the hands of creators and fans. If you want to learn more about Filmio and their community, check out their website, film.io. All right, Alessandra, you're getting my most difficult question of the bunch today. A lot of people are going to be first learning about your movie through the festival. So can you give us a brief synopsis of the film? Oh, God. Um, (laughs) Yes. So it's a a story about two sisters that visit their dad in the summer, and it tracks them through many years of their lives. You nailed it. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like I love waiting for people's, like, expressions to turn when I'm like, give me a synopsis of your movie. (laughs) But that was perfect there. So I already emphasized feature directorial debut here. When you decide you want to make your first feature, what did you think was step one to making it happen, making it a reality? And then ultimately, is that a step that worked or would you recommend something else to aspiring filmmakers out there? I mean, I I don't do any future thinking in general. So I think... I just wanted, this is a story that kind of came out really naturally and I just wrote it and then got into the right hands and just one step in front of the next step and then the next step. I didn't really think about like how to get it out in the world is just something I wanted to tell. What was the the first piece that fell into place or like the person who supported you that made you think like we're really going to do this now? I think that would be Alex Nolaris in Lexicon. Um, So I met him through a fellowship I did with the WGA in Film Nation. And I sent him my script and he loved it. And he was like, I want to help you make this. And he was the first person who was like, okay. I'm like, maybe we're going to make this. Oh, those people are so important to find. I love it. So again, Alessandra's first uh, feature here. I have a feeling that you are going to make many, many more in the future. So can you each tell me something about her as a leader on the set and also an actor's director that you are excited for more actors to get to experience in the future? I'll go first. Um, I talked to Alessandra before we started shooting about the fact that I can be a little bit of an insecure actor. If I don't get any kind of feedback at all, I'm like, oh my God, I get in my head a little bit. And so just even a word from the director being like some, some kind of contact, I have that longing. And so I expressed that to her before we started the process because she asked me, um, which not all directors do. And when we got to set, I cannot stress how comfortable Alessandra made me feel. She made me feel like I'm a better actor than I am. Like she was like, you are nailing it. Don't worry. Okay, what about this? What about like you you made me feel confident enough that I was then able to experiment. And because I'm a relatively young actor, it's only my second feature. It was really meaningful to me to be able to work with someone that helped me build my confidence moving forward, you know? That's such a beautiful yeah. answer. That's such an incredible quality to have. I, I would say too, very gracious, very brave, because to be a woman who is a writer and director and to have, to be assertive and bold and caring, um, it's a brave thing to do. And I'm incredibly proud of you. And it's just, it's beautiful. Alessandra is... is... (laughs) Ale, Ale. (laughs) Yes, we love her. I would say openness. I think just even from the very first day, um, our conversations around every take, it was just very open. You were very um, curious as to what we thought you know, a moment could be. Um, And that skill of collaboration with an actor, you know, because there's so many moving pieces, especially in your case where, you know, some of these things are loosely based on reality. Um, I was just in wonder at how open and calm you were in some scenarios that were really like, you know, tight, tight timeline. So very, very grateful for that. Well, and for me, it's like, I never acted before, so you can imagine. Oh, so I have she, questions about that. I'm very know, impressed. So, <laughs> no, and she, she helped me a lot. And and also I saw in set, because I, I've been in sets, you know, in videos and in other stuff, when I'm directing that it can get hectic and crazy, but she always had time, you know, like 
she, she and it's difficult when everything is very stressful to have that time or or at least show the actor that we have the time and you know take your time and that that is important at least for me that I was I'm starting and and with the kids too you were great with the kids like I saw you all the time with them with the, because that's difficult you know and no you nail it yeah, yeah. It's so seamless. It's so seamless. And with the structure that you roll with, that's especially impressive. Renee, I want to go back to this being your acting debut. Was the itch to act always there? And if not, why now and why this film? Like I I never wanted to act before. Like my mom is an actress back home, like in theaters. You know, she 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 couldn't live by being an actress because there they don't pay well. So but I saw her, I remember seeing her. So in my head, I, I always had that, you know, about trying to to act, but I don't know, you know, while I was taking a shower, you know, doing some scenes by myself. <laughs> but uh, when Alex, I, I'm writing a movie with Alex because that's what I, that I like, you know, direct. And so I'm writing a movie with him and he invited me uh, and I was, you know, I was thinking about it. It took me a while, not too much, but you say, yeah, let's do it. And I read the script and I liked it. And then I started to feel worried, you know? And then I said, fuck it, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and, but I was talking about this yesterday, like fuck it, but let's do it well, because that's the way, you know, you can't say like, fuck it, I'm, no, I'm gonna do it well. So I called to acting coaches and they helped me at least to understand the script better. You know, English English is my second language, so it's even harder for me. And Alexandra also, she gave me freedom to speak in Spanish, but I wanted to say, to say a lot of the lines in English, you know, most of the time. So, I don't know, it was a great experience. And, and something that I felt that I've been saying it, but it's be, because it's true, is that things that I feel while I'm singing in front of a crowd, that there's something here that you feel. I, I started to feel it while I was uh, filming and, and it feels great, you know, something here that, I don't know, I oh, like I it. So many follow-ups. Can you can you tell us the first moment you got that feeling on this set? Was it a, per, a particular scene? Uh, there were different moments, you know, that I, that I felt, you know, like, right, like thinking fast, like, in the car accident, you know, the scene was a, a little bit longer, but I remember that I was feeling like so into the character and I was thinking about my son, uh, that he could be there inside the car. And yeah, that was the first time. And I, you know, my connection also was with my cousin who he just, you know, he's, he was like my brother. And he, he died like last year, like two of them. They were my same age. So I used that in that part. Uh, so yeah, and, and that feeling, I feel it when I sing, I don't know, Latin America or songs like that, that it's, they're deep songs. So uh, yeah, so I think that's one of the times, yeah. It's incredibly powerful stuff. Um, Renee and Leo, I'll throw this question to you, but anyone feel free to jump in. It just, based on what was in the production notes, it gave me the impression that you two are probably the ones to direct this question towards. But what is it like working with a director with a personal connection to what your characters are going through? Is there anything that kind of enhances the collaboration when you're working with someone who has, you know, firsthand experience going through that and also a willingness to share it with, with you? You two as artists and also the world. Yeah, I mean, the, the story isn't exactly autobiographical, but it is loosely based on on Alessandra's life. And I think Violeta is the Alessandra in the film. And, you know, from the first meeting that we had together when we were talking about certain challenging aspects of Violeta's life and their relationship to their family, I could feel the truth of what was what your history was as you were talking to me because I think as artists we cultivate an objective distance from the work in a way it, you know it's like okay now it's a script it's separate from me but because we immediately connected I don't know at just an energetic level I could feel the emotionality bubbling up and even on set there was this quality of like this feeling underneath but you trying to 
keep it professional because you're directing. And in a way, that's exactly what Violeta is doing. Violeta has this whole emotional life underneath of, you know, loss of our relationship changing over the years and this feeling of of betrayal, but also loving you and guilt and shame and all that. But Violeta is the one who's like, no, I need to take care of my family. I need to bring them back together. I need to keep my little sister safe. I need to maybe call my dad out, but maybe not. He's, he's not ready yet. I'm not sure. So this kind of objectiveness that Violeta needs to have Alessandra was needing to have that as an artist and so I was weirdly able to just mirror that experience and it worked I think for the film um, which was really cool yeah anything you want to add? No imagine it's her father so it's it was very difficult to try to to do that uh, I ask her questions but she all the time she make me feel like comfortable. I think like maybe the the accident part that you pass through that. Yeah. You know, I asked you a few questions, but you told me that you passed out when yeah. that happened, and I was like, okay. So I don't know. Like I try to imagine to put myself in 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 the position of of what she told me about her father, and that's what I did. And I I tried to be as natural and organic I could be. You know. I mean, it's just to cut in, but for me, it was also important. Like, we created the characters together. They're based on something, but you inhabiting the role, it made it something different. Same thing with you. And, like, every one of you, we had conversations. I shared you some of the things that it was based on, but then we're, like, we're making something together. It was a collaboration. Yeah, it's really, you were very gracious in um, supporting us with information, but at the end, we you kind of mesh and you create something from from, you know, that information, and we put our hearts and ourselves into it and, and give the best. And as, as Perlio was saying, we give her, um, Alessandra a nod. Oh, yeah, the microphone, sorry guys. We give Alessandra a nod, like, was it, go was it okay? Yeah. And yeah. Alessandra is, you yeah. know. Here's my and favorite question yeah. about that. Does she have a monitor dance? Like, is there is there something you can catch her doing behind the monitor that signals to you, like, I just crushed a take? So, okay, well, there's one thing. You look over, I'm like trying to do it and have this mic here, hold the mic for me yeah. for a second. She's like this, like, so the monitor in. is right here. Yeah, like, this is a real. Do you even see the image? The You're so everything. close. She's like, yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we got it, we got it, we got yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> very serious, like not it's actually true. excited, yeah. Yeah. seriously yeah, excited. Yeah. But a nod, the nod was, you know, mm -hmm. all you need, all you need, yeah. all you need. So there's a lot of exceptional work in this movie, every single department. The beating heart of this film, though, is the connection between all of your characters. So can you each pinpoint a moment on set when a scene partner gave you just what you needed? Maybe it helped you crush a tough scene or find something in your own character that you wouldn't have been able to reach without him. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, Our dance scene was really important to me. Ooh, yeah. That was such a good moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it was a, a really beautiful and sincere mm -hmm. moment between, and I, I felt you and I felt myself um and that was really beautiful thank you for that oh, thank you um and i with leo um being in the water park <laughs> we um that was very organic for us it's and so and we had a lot of fun and um right after we called cut we slid down the, the slide, slide <laughs> and and then my extensions fell out <laughs> And we're just floating in the pool. Yeah, they were like floating. This scary and, and a small a small child in the corner was like, What is that? No. Yeah. And I was like, Oh. <laughs> um, but it was so funny. And that yeah. was a moment where I felt really connected and yeah. I felt really present. It just felt like we were having a great time and we, we became were, siblings, I think, that, that day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I saw totally. it. I saw it on set. Absolutely. I got to be there for a little bit and it was yeah. it looked like so much fun. It was also so hot. So it was like oh no my acting God. required. No one's at, no one's no. asked about the heat in <laughs> yes. Las Cruces in Mexico. Girl, but you yeah. can feel it when you watch Woo. it. I'm surprised no one's asked about the heat when we're all freezing. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. How was it being so warm now that you're cold? No, and, and and you know, like the the young girls, like they helped me a lot the way yeah. they were and also so uh, Allison, she's like meet uh, Eva. In a weird way, she helped me to be uh, an asshole. Yeah. But, but the way she was answering and everything. Uh huh. Como te contestaba. It came, yeah. Yeah. It came out like. <laughs> there were there were moments with I I only got to be there a couple days, but um, 
when that Yahtzee scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, you know, sh- Allison, both of you. It yeah. was beautiful sparring. Yeah. And there was so much I was feeling from her across that table. I like it was so complicated. She That's, was great and also Luciana so on her eyes. shaving. When yes. Shaving. That oh scene. God, that was beautiful. It's beautiful. And she was so great. Like it, I felt like she was my daughter, you know. Leslie, you just brought up that you're only on set for a couple days. There's like no simple answer to this, but it's something I always wonder, and I think you do it quite well here. What is it like playing a supporting character with limited screen time where you are supporting the main character's narrative, but also making sure that your character still feels whole? Yeah, that's a that's a doozy. I don't know what the secret sauce is to that, but yeah. you do it. Um, it's having um, an amazing family. It's having an amazing, fa- amazing family on set that is welcoming, and that doesn't always happen. I've been saying it all day. Um, but it was just so beautiful to walk into that because I was on, I really was only there for a few days. Um, I was under the understanding that, you know, the limited time to get some of these really, you know, important moments. And it was so beautiful. I was, it was sharing with someone else earlier the first day that I landed, the first night that I landed. Um, you know, I was kind of getting, I was like, all right, where is everyone? And Jaciente was eating and he was eating and we, um, we met up with him and he crammed in a small car with um, two of our producers, Sergio and Lynette and myself in the back, pulled out his laptop and started showing me dailies. He's like, your first day is, is tomorrow. So like, I just want you to feel like you're, you know, what's happening and are a part of this movie. And I, I had never, I've, I've been, um, so fortunate to work with amazing people um but it was such a unique experience because i have so much respect for you musically already um but it was beautiful to have just that intimate moment to be invited in in a sense um and and yeah so when when that happens you kind of feel like people are giving you the liberty to bring what you have to offer in a short amount of time it's difficult but it's also fun. Oh, it's also that's really so fun. true. I hope yeah. everyone has that experience on a set. It's so yeah. vital. I'm going back to a follow-up question that crossed my mind forever ago. It was something you brought up, Renee, when you mentioned that uh, you had done some like scenes in the shower. It was just making me wonder for fun. <laughs> for each of you, when you were like growing up, dreaming of becoming an actor, mm-hmm. what was the movie scene that you would reenact the most? Mm-hmm. Dang. I mean, I was I was just singing all the time. Yeah. We were singing in the shower. I was singing sure. in the shower. Uh, yeah, Anita, Anita and West Side Story, America. America. Most Definitely. of the time I, I sing. Yeah. Yeah, but well, when I was a kid, yeah, I don't know, Superman. You know, I'm old school, yes. so <laughs> yes. Superman was the guy. That's the one. Rock solid pick there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Whitney and the Bodyguard. Come on. I was... um. I was a child actor for a period of time. I was on Broadway and I didn't, I don't really remember this, but my mom reminds me that I learned everybody else's part in the play and I would like perform it and specifically like the men. And I love that for my little trans self. Um, But I was in this Tennessee Williams play called Cat Knots and Roof and the lead male character is this guy named Brick who's on crutches. And so I had the costume department like give me a set of crutches and I would go around like in the southern accent like being Brick, which is just drunk and depressed. Um, So yeah, I don't know. I think I dreamed of being leading men as a kid. (laughs) Love it. Love it. Um, very big question for you, but there's something in your director statement that that caught my eye here. You were saying, I wrote the quote down so I get it right. While making the film, you kept asking, can we make amends for our missteps, our words, our actions, or will they forever define us? And then you also went on to say, the closer I get to finishing this film, the more I realize that issue is with the question. Life is far more complex. Given you made that statement as you were finishing the film, it was making me wonder, now that it's done and you've sat and actually watched it, do you have more clarity on that particular topic? No. Um, <laughs> I think that's probably the right answer. Yeah. No, I mean, I think life is just complex and you never really understand what someone's going through. And I think part of making this film for me was a- actually understanding my father. Because after he died, I was so angry. I had so much anger towards him for all of the shit he did and all the shit he put us through and the mess that he left. And so I think making this film and wanting to make him feel whole and 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 big and and not not shying away from the bad, but also embracing all the good, made me love him so much because it also made me realize that my trauma is his trauma as well. Like the car accident fucked him up as well. Um, and so 
Wow. That, yeah. So it was a, that was been important for me. It was like a healing thing, but I was like, Ooh. no, the the answers are, yeah, Our it's like, yeah, that was <laughs> yeah. therapy. Just from, just from knowing that that was the question that you were asking, and attempting to answer the whole way is like that's beautiful. Well, you sharing your story and your experience and, and your experience processing it through film will now wind up influencing others the same way when they sit down and watch it themselves. So thank you for sharing that with us in the world. Um, I will end with one more group question. It's our Filmio question. And as I said mm -hmm. at the beginning, it's a company that's all about putting the creative power in the hands of the artist, which I think this industry needs to do more of. So yes, for each of you, can you recall a time when someone gave you creative control when you maybe didn't expect to get it, even though you deserved it? Wow. Whoa. When someone gave, a, gave me creative control, Yeah. when I... Can you repeat it? When you didn't, didn't expect to get it. But you did. Okay. I'm like a big believer. Yeah, Everybody yeah. deserves it. Someone the other day so emphasized I, the importance of collaboration and the fact that sometimes you need so to key. defer to others. But yeah. yeah. Like, I, like, you know, in music, like with my label, uh, I, I always thought that they were going to stop me uh, creatively speaking. and But it was the opposite. Also, you have to, I don't know, in my case, I think that I, I set it up, you know, like I, I, this is the way I work. And if you guys want to be with me uh, and you want to sign me, this is the way it's going to be. And I set that up like since 2005 mm -hmm. when I first signed with Sony. Uh, and I have, I'm free. I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Whatever I want, I can, you know, I, I have done so many crazy stuff. And they let me because they trust me, but they trust me because they they can see that I know what I want to do and this is the way I am. And so that's important to show the people that you're going to work with and they're going to invest money on you that you're sure about what you want to do, you know, and you're not like, well, I don't know. No, this is this is me. And if you don't like it, I'm going to go somewhere else. So, mm. yeah. And that's how I earned that. So good. Yeah. Mm. As it yeah. should be. Um, I think for me, it's actually I came up as an editor. So, and I think editors don't get the credit they deserve because mm -hmm. they really put the film together. And, you know, working with other directors that really trusted me as an editor and being being able to like lead a story in that way made me also a better collaborator because you want to hire people that can do their job and can do it well. And you don't have to, mi obviously it's a shared yeah. vision, but you don't have to micromanage. And so sometimes I'm like, I'm actually going to leave for a few hours, do whatever you think, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. You know, and I think that's important to kind of trust your collaborators. Yeah. Looking at this film and how it's structured and knowing you have an editing background makes all the sense in makes the world. Makes so much sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, when I worked on The Flash, uh, it was a dream for me to do all my stunts, mm. but I didn't think that I was going to be able to do it. Um, it was my first film, and I remember training, going in every single day, and our stunt coordinator, Eunice, I remember she was like up in these stairs, and I looked up at her and I said, where's my stunt double? She's like, you don't need one. I was like, well, don't we need one legally? <laughs> <laughs> and we did end up um, having someone there with I'm us. Like, Am I going to break? But, no, but it was my dream and I, I trained so hard and it was so amazing to have, again, it's so amazing to have female leaders. Um, um, it's just so beautiful because they support and believe in your strength. Um, and Eunice supported that the whole way through. And, and that was something for me that was, I, I couldn't believe that I was doing it. And I ended up doing all my stunts, which was awesome for me. You crushed that role. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You already know. Thank you. You already know, friend. Leslie, do you want to go or you want me to go? Go. go okay. Go. Um, I think something that was really cool about this project is that Violeta on the page is written as a woman. Um, and... You know, when I was first brought this project and got to meet with Alessandra and talk about it, you know, I described to her, I'm like, hey, there's a scene where there's a sex scene and there's intimacy and then we're at the pool. I'm a trans person who's had gender affirming top surgery. I use they them pronouns. I'm very vocal about my queerness and I want to be able to bring some of that to the table. And Alessandra immediately was like, oh yeah, of course, obviously. And what was so cool ab about how it all evolved is that 
even though I was given the opportunity to sort of honor the fullness of myself, it didn't have to become a plot point in the film. And it just it became a thing where, OK, Violeta, we see her cut her hair when she's young. And then when we see her in their 20s, like they're living their most authentic life. They're thriving. They look great. I'm like, <laughs> I love the journey of the two sisters. Um, and so that was really cool. And in a way, it's a kind of creative control because it was an honoring of, of what I'm bringing uniquely to the part. Um, so I was really grateful for that. Yes. Um, well, I would say I've had like, I've been fortunate to have multiple experiences within music where you work with people that are that are skilled at collaborating and they allow you um, space to bring what you have to bring in film as well. But particularly with this film, I think back to your original question because it was such a short amount of time um, and I felt like I was coming into something that was already, there was momentum. It was beautiful to get that nod of not only validation, but um, just a pr like liberty to, hey, like make make Yenny yours. Like Ale and I had many conversations, um, a couple conversations before, I, you know, we she started shooting and uh, and I got kind of an idea of who Yenny was, um, but she was so open. Um, and then when I got to rehearse with you um, and your team, it was just I never got to I never got to have that kind of. I don't know, uh, spontaneous, um, let's try it out like we're in theater, let's just go for it. You're yeah. such a great Im Im improviser, you, okay. you know, like that's what that's what you do and you brought that to the set and so to spar in that way was really, I didn't know I, I, didn't know I, I, I was able to do it but it was beautiful to be challenged to, to do it in this film. I love that question, I love hearing answers like that. I must let you go so you can continue promoting your film, getting it the widest possible audience, which it very much deserves. Huge congratulations on In the Summers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So everybody awesome. out there, thank you for watching this interview. Keep an eye out for the movie yeah. yourselves and also for more interviews from Sundance 2024. And big thanks to Filmio.